Hey there, welcome to the Breakthrough Creative. I'm your host, John McDavitt, and this is the place where we talk about the business of art and the art of business. This may be the most important episode you listen to this year because we're going to talk about education and being on a, a, a track toward making a living from your art. And, and it's really important to break down the components that I'm going to have in this video and, and to understand them and be aware of where you're at in them because if you're not, you can kind of get sidetracked and, and maybe longer than, than you want, okay? And what do I mean by that? I mean, you can really get stuck in education or you can get stuck in the belief that you're not you're not, um, you're not enough yet. You haven't learned enough. You're not there. And you don't even test it. And so you may be further along than you think. And, I, and, and, and so I say that because I think you need to be testing where you're at in your, your development by trying to get work as quickly as you can, wh whether you feel you're ready or not. You need to be going on interviews or you need to be trying to pick up clients uh, for, for murals, for whatever it is that, that is your particular thing. And before I get too far into all of this, I, I want to di make a disclaimer, okay? I want to exclaim a disclaimer that what I'm going to talk about today in the different paths, I'm, I'm not going to spell out an absolute road for you to follow. I don't think that there are absolute roads to follow. I think there are standards that we need to be aware of. But if somebody is selling you an absolute path and this is the only way or this is the best way, well, it may be the best way for them. It may be the best way for that particular practice. But there are lots of ways to get there. And it seems like everybody has thoughts on the topic, whether they're artists or not, or business people or not. And as, I, as I'm talking about paths and education, I want you to consider that this show in particular about the business of art and the art of business is going to be referencing both your art and your skills and everything that goes on that side of what you're actually servicing or selling and then there's business. You know, you've got to learn certain standards and practices in business. So, all right, got a bunch of things to go through here. And the first one that I want to look at is art education. So you're coming up through high school. Maybe, maybe you've been through high school and you're, you're further ahead than this right now, okay? But you're trying to decide what to do. And college is looking like an option for you. You want to go back to college or you want to go to college, just coming out of high school, and you want to get your degree. I have absolutely no problem with college, okay, by the way, as I'm leading into this, because I, I don't want somebody to think that I'm, I'm poo-pooing college. I'm not. College is a great place to learn stuff. It's a great place to meet people and make connections which is something, by the way, you want to do no matter where you're at in the process. You want to be making connections with people. And I remember one of my professors told me, you want to make friends with people who look like they are on an, an, an ascending upwards trajectory because those are people who are going places and you want to go to the places that they go and, and you want to be one of those people. I'm not saying that you shun other people. I'm not saying that you don't try to make friends with all kinds of people. I'm not saying that you use them and manipulate these people that, that you're going to, you know, kind of ride their tail, uh, coattails to places. But this is just the way of the world. You kind of look for people who are on the ascension and, and you want to connect with them. It's called networking. And somebody is going to get a job somewhere or, or they are and they're going to have you come to mind or it's going to be a place you want to work. And why am I talking about working at a company when this is more of an entrepreneurial show? I'll get into that in a minute as well. But you, you want to have friends who are going places 
in, in the industry in which you are interested, okay? Because people like to work with people they know and people they like, okay? So that's, that's a really important thing to know. So anyway, that's just kind of a, a, a baseline across everything I'm talking about today, okay? So back to, to college. Why would you go to college? Well, you're going to go to college to get information and training that either you wouldn't be able to get in other places or uh, you're going to get and or you're going to get a degree that is going to uh, lead the way. It's going to open doors for you, right? Because you want to go work in a particular um, place that they, they want you to have a degree. By the way, I don't have a degree. Um, I have almost two years of post high school education. And I was an honor student throughout high school. Uh, top 10% of my class graduating. And folks would have sent me anywhere I wanted, but I went a different path. And I'll explain that in a little bit. And I'll explain why. Um, but, but back to college. So you, you need to count the cost of college, okay, for that degree. Because that degree that is going to get you a job somewhere down the road, uh, it's, it doesn't guarantee you a job, right? There, there are no guarantees in life. So it doesn't guarantee you that you're going to get a job. And it's going to cost you something. And I was looking around online the other day, this week, at college tuition costs and art school costs in particular. And what I came up with, with the, the, the average, so tuition and then expenses, like living expenses if you're going to stay in a dorm and whatever else goes with that. Per year, what I came up with for 19, 19, 2019 and 20 was $40,000 a year. $40,000 a year. 40,000 times four years is what? $160,000. Now, unless you get somebody paying that for you, which would be incredibly generous and amazing, um, you're going to have to figure out how are you going to pay that? And I mean beyond the student loan, because the student loan, that, that just puts off paying for it, right? What you need to be thinking about is, is how are you actually going to pay it off? Because... I, I don't know that you're going to get hired for $100,000 out of the gate. Probably not, right? So how are you going to pay off this massive loan? And then still be able to live life. Because you're going to need to have some kind of a car, I imagine, unless you're living in the city and you have uh, public transportation that you're going to use or you live next door. You're going to be working from home. Uh, you're going to need to pay for a home, an apartment, Maybe you want to buy something, um, you know, you're going to have to pay for food. You know, you have all these other expenses on top of this $160,000 burden, right? So begin with the end in mind. Are you going to be able to pay for that? Is college absolutely the way for you to go? It may well be, but... You know, as far as my college journey goes, because I, I did go to a community college out of high school, and that was because I wanted to learn about special effects makeup, and I was studying under the guy who was the best in, in the, the movie industry. And and so I was I was concentrating on that, and then I started going to uh, this, this community college just to get some general education under my belt. And man, gen community colleges are even really expensive now. It wasn't as expensive back, you know, in the late 80s. So I was taking an art class there and I quickly discovered that the art classes they taught there were not the art classes that were going to be beneficial to me. So I pivoted and I started to take business law, business accounting, business management entrepreneurial classes, I started to switch my focus on to business, which leads me to a thought for you. The, I don't want to use absolutes because they're dangerous, right? Because you can always be shown that, that 
that's not absolute. Just like I was saying before, like this is the only way. I would say generally the artists that and the creatives that I work with who are the most successful have a, a, a certain skill set and talent stack that makes them unique and special. They're kind of unicorns in the world. So you want to make sure that you are building a skill set that isn't one dimensional. You don't want to be the person who just draws pictures or portraits and that's all you do. I mean, maybe, maybe there's an avenue in there that I'm not seeing that, that you can go and do that, but it feels, it feels a little bit thin to me. And, you know, for me, I, I had this background of airbrushing, which allowed me to airbrush t-shirts and jackets and cars and on any kind of surface that would take paint and could be cleared or set or protected. And, and so I had this airbrushing thing going and I could draw and I was building a skill set that I didn't even understand was going to be beneficial to me in the special effects makeup realm because I was learning about sculpting and mold making and then casting. And that, that became the segue for me into product development. So I had this kind of unique uh, spot in, in my industry locally where, where I understood the process of product development and I could apply those skills to a variety of components in the process and I became valuable to clients as I was going along. And, you know, having some of the business background helped me as well because I was learning how business worked and I was learning how to interact with clients and how to get clients and, and kind of building a, a process and a system for how I was going to contact them and communicate to them what it was I could do to help them solve their problems. Okay. So that's something to bear in mind when you're looking at a college, when you're looking at secondary education, because you may decide that, that getting a four-year degree in, in illustration or design or music or something is not the way to go. And what you need to do is, is get a degree in engineering or a business marketing degree or, or something that, that matches itself to your particular skill set. And remember I said, begin with the end in mind. It begins with the end in mind. If you're a sculptor and you want to work large, maybe uh, engineering and welding are the thing to get into. Maybe it is uh, 3D processes in, in engineering digital virtual uh, products that can then be you know, made on a 3D printer. And so you're gonna, you're gonna go and do a deep dive into that because that doesn't look like that's going anywhere. That looks like it's gonna do nothing but expand. And so if you're, if you're gonna be spending a substantial amount of money on your education for a degree, it might as well be in something that you think is going to be around for a while and that it's going to benefit and supplement your creative skills. So, so that's a, a possible way to look at it uh, as far as what you're going to go after for your education if you're going to go to college. Okay, Count that cost. It's expensive. Um, all right. Another kind of secondary education, I'm just going to call it that, anything after high school, secondary education is uh, a trade school. Um, I know that there are art schools that I, are, I look at as, as, you know, particular focuses in trade skill, schools um, because they're called trade schools because they focus on a, a, a particular practice. So uh, the, the, uh, there's the art school, Art Center of Pasadena, is focusing purely on art. Maybe it's different now than it was years ago, but I'm pretty sure it's still focusing on art and that's what it does. That's a very expensive school, by the way. So sometimes you're just trading, um, you know, a university for a trade school, but the, it's all the same money. But then you're, you're in Pasadena, you're in LA, there's a lot going on out there. And again, you wanna begin with the end in mind. So that you can go, boy, do I, do I want to get connected with all those people out there so I can get into the film industry or some high-end design industry? 
Um, maybe, maybe you can do the same thing if you're, uh, you know, in the middle of Kansas somewhere. Uh, certainly you can do it at, at major uh, cities and, and then you can study online at a lot of places. But you want to make sure if you're studying online, are you actually learning something? And I guess that's another kind of a segue that I want to get into is, is if you're in a class or you're in a series of classes or you're in a semester of classes and you're not learning anything, don't be afraid to pull the plug and go somewhere else. You don't want to be spending $40,000 a year on something that isn't benefiting you or on something that you go, whoa, this is way, I, this is not my thing. I'm wrong. Cut the cord as soon as you can. You don't want to be on the hook for money that that you, you don't need to be paying for if it's if it's not your thing. Okay. So so trade school is a place where you can go to focus on a, a, a very particular thing. And again, maybe you don't go to an art trade school. Maybe you're gonna go and you're gonna learn a trade. So you're gonna learn to be a plumber, you're gonna learn to be a welder, you're gonna you know, it's something that that is gonna benefit you down the road. Maybe you're going to decide that, hey, plumbing, there's so much money in it. I'm going to be a plumber and I'm going to be a muralist and I'm going to build the mural business up as I go. I mean, that's that sounds crazy, right? But I could see it being a way for somebody to go because you'd be able to earn a living and learn something hands on. And then you're getting into all of these homes to meet people and you could could always, you know, pitch painting murals as well. I'm just brainstorming. Maybe it's crazy, but I think that we need to learn to think outside the box. All right. Another way to learn. YouTube. Skillshare. You have to pay some for Skillshare, but a lot of these online um, social media or platforms allow you to dig in and learn. And if you don't think you can learn stuff from there, then you need to learn how to learn. Like that is one of the most important things anybody can do is learn how to learn. And I'm not saying that it's all the highest quality stuff, but you can find some really high quality information on there if you're discerning and you dig and you can learn. And you need to be active working in whatever uh, materials or programs you need to be working on. So, so it, it takes the onus off of uh, a college or a trade school and it puts it firmly onto you, but that's where it should be anyway. Um, I don't even think that was right what I said about putting, taking the onus off of the university or the trade school. Don't just float through these schools. Don't float through your education. You need to, you know, have your head on a swivel and be taking everything in. It's so important that that you're not just a passenger passively going through your education. You need to be aggressively taking action and learning this stuff. You need to learn it. You need to, to be aggressive about what you want to learn and how you're learning so that you can be taking in all the information that is beneficial to you and your career. All right. So YouTube, Skillshare, there are other online platforms where you're going to pay some money. I've paid, you know, $1,000 for an online course that's been 12 weeks that has mostly been on me, you know, watching what is going on on the videos and then applying it and then submitting it to the teacher who gives me corrections and I'm able to ask questions. And, you know, it's, it's expensive, relatively speaking, but it's not $40,000 a year expensive. And I've learned so much from some of these courses that I've taken online that I've paid money for that, that have been specific focuses that um, I wouldn't have learned, I don't think, in a university. So the, the, the last way to learn that I can think of, apart from university, a trade school, or online and online platforms is some kind of a mentorship or on-the-job training. And so again, this is beginning with the end in mind. If you can get into a company that does all the stuff you want to do, whether you're going to do that for the rest of your career or not, but if you can get in somewhere and learn, oh my goodness, it is just... It, 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 you, you, 
You're, you're learning from experts in their industry who are applying their practical skills to real world projects for their clients. Uh, and, and you just, you just learn so much more. It's like, I think of people having kids and the first kid, uh, is going to be a little bit slower at learning than the second kid. And then the third kid comes along and they're just so far ahead. And I don't mean in, in absolute intelligence, like they might not be better at math, the third kid, but socially they come along more quickly because they've got older brothers and sisters who are, are interacting with them and they're watching them and the brothers and sisters aren't quite at the level of, uh, as mom and dad are. So it just brings them along more quickly. And that's what a, an on-the-job mentorship kind of training program can do for a creative. It's going to bring you along in ways that, that you never expected. And I have several of those through my 20s that I can point to. I was working at a sculpture studio and we were designing toys and Happy Meal toys and uh, things for slot machines and product for um, pinball games and it was all real world stuff that we were working on and we were molding and sculpting and designing and painting and uh, conceptualizing. There were so many different practices that went into it that brought me so far and you know in in my 20s as well I had a, another toy designer that I was helping out and working with uh, who who was just so clever and so smart and taught me so many things that I wasn't even aware of that that uh, were just soaking into me that I'll still think about things that he said to me uh, to this very day and it just reminds me uh, of, of how to work and how to craft things and you know the, these are another great place to m make connections and connections not just with people who are on their way up but who are up there already and who are going to be references for you or suggest to their friends to work with you so you know the relational aspect is so important in, in, in all of this and you know chances are you're going to learn an awful lot about business as well right working in in these on-the-job mentorship types of places and if there are things you want to learn that, that they're doing that they're not necessarily having you work on, ask them, hey, can I work on this with you? Or, hey, can we talk? Or can we go get lunch? And, you know, socially, a lot of the times in a creative atmosphere, people are, are, are chatting and talking at different points throughout the day because, you know, they're not going to, maybe they listen to podcasts all day. I don't know. But, but I've found that, you know, people like to, to talk. How are you doing? What's going on in your life? And then you get to know people. You get to be friends with them. And, it just, you know, does amazing things. And then the other thing about that mentorship and on-the-job training is is oftentimes you're earning some money there and, and you're increasing your value as you're earning. So you're probably not even paying for that. So, so that, you know, leads me to just a, a thought on uh, a college education or a trade school and then some kind of degree that you walk away with. Uh, when you're done there, as opposed to, you know, not doing college and not having a degree. Now, like I said, I didn't graduate college, so I don't have a degree. Here is what I see as, as the benefit to having a degree. It, it is, if you're going to work somewhere and you get interviewed, they're going to ask you, what's your degree? And you've probably got a leg up on somebody else to get hired at a company if if you're up against somebody with a degree. It, it doesn't always mean that the person with the degree is better than the prospect that doesn't. Now, I've had a couple of companies hire me. This was back in my 20s. Uh, and those were the last jobs I had because I was doing my own thing as well and I was always kind of working, working on my trajectory. Uh, to be self-employed and and I, I had companies interview me human resources all that what's your you know highest level of school and then I on my own independently have gone to clients to you know introduce them to what my skill set is what I do and none of them 
asked me if I had a degree. They didn't care. All they cared was, was that I could solve their problems. Okay. And it's just amazing. I mean, nobody, nobody cares unless you're going to go work for a company. And then that becomes a point of scrutiny. Now I've had clients, you know, years later or sometime after ask me, what's your degree in? And I'd say, well, I don't have a degree. And it's just a point of conversation. I don't feel like they're trying to leverage it in any way, shape or form. It's just being social and they're curious. And so that's just something to bear in mind. If you're going to be independent, you know, that degree is less important. Now, my one caveat to that is, is if you're going to be, you know, working with engineers, maybe they'll ask you if you've got a four-year degree. I don't know. Maybe it's something that is a, a, a bit more technical or uh, it has, it does have more scrutiny to it. You know, like you're an electrician, you know, where, where did you, where did you learn all your electrical work. Well, I went to this trade school and such and such, and maybe they'll want you to provide something. Maybe they won't. I don't really know how that works. But, you know, if you're working creatively with electricity or you're working creatively in an engineering aspect, those are things to consider. So, something that I think is really, really important about your trajectory is, is working in some way, shape, or form at a company or, or at a, a studio in your 20s because you want to learn from other people. Like there's a secondary part to your education beyond uh, formal training or online training, and that is the on-the-job training, okay? And I know I talked about that for a little while just, just now as opposed to, you know, going to school. But say even when you go to school, you need to get in somewhere and you need to get your feet wet in the professional world. So very important to do because it's just gonna, gonna again, um, it, it, it's gonna grow and mature you in ways in your career that no other thing can do because you know, you're held to a standard there and you're also gonna have to deal with people, some who are gonna be cool, some are gonna be jerks, some aren't even gonna wanna talk to you, some are going to become your best friends, and you've got to learn how to navigate that as well, that social aspect of, of working life and, you know, not really being able to tell people off if, if you know, it, it, it forces you to figure out how to deal with difficult people under difficult circumstances because you're going to be relying on that income, okay? Those are important things to learn. Um, so... I feel like I'm jumping around a little bit, but I think I think that I've covered uh, m most of this. Um, I think something that you can consider about education is is that you're never done learning. You're always going to be learning things, and maybe what you do if you don't have the end in mind, uh, maybe what you need to do is is try working at a few different things and and learning your craft, and maybe you go to a community college, or maybe there is a company nearby that you can go work for that has uh, some tangential relationship to what it is that you want to do and you're going to go learn there and uh, maybe that means you're putting college off for a bit because you don't know exactly what you want to do and I think that that's okay I think that that you know because you don't want to pay hundred and sixty thousand dollars for something you're not sure about right? And college is only going to go up in, in price. So, so whatever it is you're doing, you know, count the cost all the way around. Maybe college is the place for you. Fantastic. Go do it. Maybe college later on is the place for you. Fantastic. Go do it. Maybe, maybe none of that is what you're supposed to do. You're just going to kind of pick up and learn things here and there. And you're going to go do your thing anyway. And you're a real self-starter, which you should be anyway. And and good for you. That's what you're going to go end up doing. You know, as far as, as my whole thing goes, I, I got out of high school and I needed to figure out a way to make a living. I hated working at places at retail. And, and so I started airbrushing t-shirts and I found my way doing that. And I, I learned a lot and I made money doing it. And it showed uh, promising signs for the rest of my career. And after that, 
I, I, uh, I guess alongside that, I was attending school, uh, a community college, just to get some business courses under my belt after I realized the art thing wasn't going to work. And uh, went and explored the effects industry out in L.A. and up in San Francisco and found that that wasn't going to be the thing for me. So after that, I, I came back home and I made this decision that I was going to become an illustrator that I was gonna focus on 2D. And I was still airbrushing t-shirts and uh, somewhere along the way, I connected with this guy through airbrushing t-shirts that became this first studio that, that I was called in to work at. I was a subcontractor, I didn't have regular hours, but they were busy and they would have me in doing a variety of different things. And I was learning my craft there. And then I had another toy designer that, that called me in and he was working out of his basement and I was learning a lot of things there, cutting my teeth on that. And I'm airbrushing t-shirts. And then one of these guys uh, at, at his studio uh, wanted to put on a haunted attraction for the Halloween season. And he had this 23,000, I think, square foot haunted house that we designed and built and wrote for and operated. And, you know, that was such a huge blessing to be a part of that team and to see how something like that is undertaken from, from the foundation all the way up and then to operate this thing. And I was starting to see that I had all of these different experiences that were, were, were teaching me amazing things and, and earning me a living as well. And, and then somewhere along the way, Badger Airbrush came along. The, the owner of the company saw me airbrushing t-shirts and invited me out to the, the company um, headquarters and hired me as a consultant. So that was a whole other thing I'd never considered before. And now I'm traveling around the states and the world airbrushing and showing people how to airbrush and helping to sell the product and design the product. And and I'm, I'm just in this world of product design and development and illustration and and real world practices and it's just amazing everything that was happening in the midst of that and I, I did go back to a community college in my 20s to study under uh, a couple of illustrators who were fantastic and one of them in particular changed the way I, I drew and my approach to drawing and really got me to that next step that next plateau and, and then, you know, I draw a lot just for myself for fun. I mean, if you go into my Instagram account, John underscore McDavid underscore art, I'll link it below. You can see that I'm, I'm creating a lot and you're not seeing a lot of the, the work I'm doing for my clients. I can't share a lot of the work that I do for my clients. So, uh, it's, it's challenging, you know, to not be able to share it, but I, I just, you know, I like to draw and I like to draw characters and I like to explore things. So I, I post a lot of that stuff and, um, you know, then, then on through my, my twenties, you know, I found my income going up from, from as, you know, as low as, you know, almost nothing, uh, like $4,000 up to about 60 or $70,000 a year. So there was this, there was this trending upwards and then it was in my thirties when, when after I had, I had gotten some murals under my belt as well, some big murals that I, I took money from the mural business and I poured it, uh, back into, or the mural job back into my, my digital business, which didn't exist because I, I bought a computer and, and that computer opened up the world to everything between, you know, not everybody had computers at that point. Now we all do, but you know, being online, uh, being able to email files and work in Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop in the product development corporate world just blew the lid off it. And suddenly I, I, in my early 30s, I had a design studio. I had a small design business that was charging like a small design business should. And that's, that's when I really started to, to make money. But without my 20s, without you know, working hard and, and learning as much as I could here and there and, and everywhere in all of these different manners, I wouldn't have gotten to that, that point in my 30s where I had a small studio. Um, I didn't grow the studio as, as 
in, in the best way business wise. I should have hired people or, or had people on retainer that, that could do the work, but it was hard to find people. And maybe that's just me, you know, at the time being a control freak. So anyway, live and learn. And, you know, essentially that's, I think that's the episode really is, is have the end in mind. Where do you want to go? My end in mind, by the way, was kind of vague, but also kind of direct. It was, I wanted to make a living as an artist. So you might want to be a little bit more, um, specific than that, but, but you might not. You might want to keep it open. I was kind of a jack of all trades, and I, I like that. And it allowed me to to get to know many different people and do many different things. Um, you know, but there's something to being laser focused. And uh, anyway, I, I think that's it for today. I hope this, this is really beneficial for you. By the way, I, I just started uh, and launched, I guess, my Patreon for the Breakthrough Creative. You can support the show there. Um, you can uh, actually support in a manner that is going to allow us to connect in a group or one-on-one. -on -one. If you have any questions uh, that you want answered or you really want to explore what it is like to earn a living as an artist or you have some particular uh, obstacles that you want to get past, I'd love to help you with that. And and brainstorm with that and partner with you on that. I think that would be really cool uh, uh, to, to be able to get you past those things. Uh, if you have any questions for me, you can always email me at uh, john at thebreakthroughcreative.com. And uh, I'm saying a lot of ums right now, so I think I'm done with this particular episode. Uh, just a, a quick recap, okay? Be be. Be careful that you have the end in mind. You need to have the end in mind, at least to some degree. You can, you can adjust it along the way, but you know, have the end with, in mind. Because if you don't begin with the end in mind, you can get caught up and lost in, in places. And that's, that, you don't want to be lost for too long. Okay? Um, your education, lots of different ways to do it. Go to a university, go to a community college, go to a trade school. You can learn online. Some of the online learning is free. And then, you know, there's the mentorship going to work in person on the job training, which I have always loved. That's one of my favorite things to do. And count the cost of your education. Uh, maybe you're not putting enough finances into it. and You need to spend some money to learn some things you can't learn for free online. Um, maybe you go, I, I don't know, about 40000 a year. I don't know how I'm going to be able to make that back. Or maybe you've got that covered and fantastic. You know that that's what you want to do. Uh, and, and then all along the way, you need to be learning uh, not just your craft and the skills that go with your craft and the applied skills that go with your craft and your art. You need to be learning about business. You need to be, and some of that is just hard knocks. Like you got to learn it while you're doing it. Okay, I'm a big, big fan of earning while you learn. All right, with that being said, what's your next step? What are you going to do once you turn off this episode? Uh, I, I hope you've got something picked out and you're going to go learn that thing you need to learn or you're going to go call that uh, new client or make those 20 cold calls that you need to make to get your foot in the door somewhere. Uh, and, and whatever it is, I just hope that you're busy going about the business of learning what it is you need to do to get from here to there to that next step. All right. All right. I, uh, I love artists. I love you guys. Uh, I, I hope you're well, and I will talk to you next week. On behalf of the Breakthrough Creative, I am your host, John McDavitt, and we'll talk to you next time. Cheers. <laughs>